Welcome to the presentation of our article Improving Purchasing Behavior Predictions by Data Augmentation with Situational Variables. A study published in 2010, Volume 9, Issue 6 of the International Journal of Information Technology and Decision Making. To communicate our findings, we organize our presentation into five general sections. First, the introduction. We help you understand the positioning of this study within the broader context of marketing literature. Second, we elaborate on several situational variables that we propose can influence a customer's purchasing behavior. Third, we explain our methodology for this study. Fourth, we present our interesting results. And fifth, we wind up by outlining our conclusions and suggesting some directions for further research. So, as promised, Philip will start by situating this study in the field of marketing. In recent decades, we've noticed an important development from mass marketing to direct marketing and customer relationship management. That means a successful modern company have to provide customized services to gain an advantage in the competitive environment. At the same time, technological developments, the rise of the internet, and the lower costs for data warehousing and information processing help many firms to develop sophisticated information technology tools. With such tools, they could customize their marketing strategies and build long-term relationships with their clients. As they worked on these efforts, Databases of huge magnitude were created. These databases can support several marketing strategies, such as identifying prospective customers and attracting them efficiently. In addition, customer relationship management, or CRM, can increase the individual value of existing clients, called customer development. Finally, CRM also helps companies retain customers because the information in the database helps to identify who are most likely to churn. This enables us to implement new personalized marketing actions to increase the customer's satisfaction and loyalty. This evolution in tools and usages means that research has evolved as well. Today, a lot of empirical research tries to figure out how companies can improve their customer re relationship management. We clearly can identify two main research streams that do so. First, a lot of research is devoted to improving predictive data mining techniques on which CRM tools are based. Researchers have evolved from traditional methods like decision trees and regression models towards more advanced machine learning techniques such as support factor machines, neural networks, and even combinations of several predictive models called ensemble methods. Second, researchers have worked on possible ways to improve the quality of the customer database that provides the input to these new data mining techniques. In this case, the customer database becomes one of the most important assets of a firm. Inferior database quality creates garbage in, garbage out effect. That is, even the best data mining techniques fail if the customer database gives them rotten information. We decided that great insights might come about if we investigated how data augmentation that includes situational variables could improve purchasing behavior predictions over and above the predictions that emerge from models with only traditional variables. So consider a traditional CRM model. It includes variables about individual customers like social demographics, lifestyle variables or past purchases of the individual itself. But we think the situation surrounding a purchase also significantly affect a customer's choice. Some of these situational variables even are known in advance and could easily be included in a predictive model. For example, a home vending company 
we can decide when a salesperson should visit each customer and which salesperson we should send. In such case, it clearly makes sense to include situational characteristics. The situational characteristics we consider come from a famous study by Belk and colleagues, published in the Journal of Consumer Research in 1975. That distinguished five dimensions of situational variables. Physical surroundings are the most apparent features, like location, sounds, aromas, weather and lightning. Our home vending company specializes in frozen foods and ice cream. That means weather is probably an important predictive variable. In addition, modern weather forecasts are pretty accurate, so we can use these variables to improve our CRM model. The temporal perspective, obviously related to time, such as when our salesperson will visit each client. This variable is divided into three categories, the morning, afternoon or evening. For social surroundings, we think about other people who might be around during the purchase. Of course, in the home vending setting, the most important social variable is the interaction between the customer and the salesperson. Hence, we will try to capture this salesperson effect using a multi-level model. Task definition indicates why a customer might buy a particular product, such as whether it is a gift or for personal use. And finally, antecedent states refer to the momentary mood of a customer. Because traditional transactional databases do not include these last two variables, mostly because they would be very costly to gather for every customer. We do not include them in our model. Instead, we focus on the first three dimensions, all of which are practical and implementable. Dirk will now elaborate on the data, methodology and evaluation criteria used throughout this study. In this study, we collected data from a large home vending company specialized in frozen foods and ice cream. The 175 salespeople visit their 160,000 clients on a regular basis, usually bi-weekly. Regarding our data collection across 2007 and 2008, you might notice that we excluded December and January, be mostly because the company offers a lot of promotional activities during the Christmas and New Year holidays. So that period demands a different model. Our goal is to predict whether a customer will buy at least one product conditional on him or her being at home. So we use only observations when the customer was at home. Of course, this model could be combined with another model that predicts the probability that a client is at home. But that notion is beyond the scope of our study. Next, we also want to remark that only one visit per customer is randomly selected in order to avoid correlation between purchase occasions of the same customer. We found that if the customer was at home, he or she bought at least one product in 46% of the purchase occasions. Therefore, our data are nearly equally balanced between events and non-events. In the following section, we will explain the two classification techniques used throughout this study. For our basic model and the models augmented with weather and time variables, we used logistic regression techniques, a well-known method frequently used to solve binary classification problems that offers good interpretability. For example, it produces specific information about the size and direction of the effects of independent variables. Logistic regression belongs to the group of generalized linear models that use a link function to adopt ordinary least squares regression to other response variables. To estimate the parameters, we maximize the log likelihood function, then include the estimates in the link function to create customer purchase probabilities ranging from 0 to 1. Finally, Logistic regression assumes 
that all observations are independent of one another. Violating this assumption can significantly affect the accuracy of the model. But in this study, it is expected that the salespeople's various personal, attitudinal and behavioral characteristics should create correlations for purchases that involve the same salesperson. This salesperson effect can be captured in a multi-level model that treats the salesperson intersets as random variables with a spe specified probability distribution. As this equation shows, a multi-level model is a generalized linear mixed model by which the intercept beta sub 0i and slope coefficients beta sub 1i are assumed to vary across the groups. So to evaluate the predictive performance of each model, we split the database randomly into two equal parts. The first part is the training sample on which the model is estimated. Then we validate the model with the second part. We also use our out of period sample from 2008 to validate the model a second time. As evaluation metric for the classifier, we use the area under the receiver operating characteristic curve. The advantage of an AUC in comparison with other evaluation metrics, like the percentage correctly classified, also known as accuracy, is the fact that PCC is highly dependent on the chosen threshold that has to be determined to distinguish the predicted events from non-events. As you can see, the PCC is calculated by first ranking the customers according to their probability of purchase. Next, a cutoff value is chosen. All customers with probability of purchase higher than the cutoff are classified as buyers and will be visited. All customers with a lower uh, likelihood of purchase are labeled as non-buyers. This classification is used to construct a confusion matrix and, based on the true positives and the true negatives, the percentage correctly classified can be calculated. However, this measure only indicates performance at the chosen cutoff, even though the cutoff in reality varies depending on the context of the problem. So we applied an evaluation criterion independent of the chosen cutoff specifically the area under the receiver operating characteristic curve, also called AUC. For this measure, we create a two-dimensional graphical representation of sensitivity and one minus specificity for all possible cutoff values. The AUC then measures the area under the curve, which can range from a lower limit of 0.5 if the predictions are random to an upper limit of 1 if the model's predictions are perfect. As you can see, this evaluation is totally independent of any chosen cutoff. Now Philip will take over again to discuss the results of this study. With regard to our results, we began by establishing a basic benchmark model from the transactional data only. Six transactional variables are significant in terms of predicting purchasing behavior on the next visit. Having a closer look at the parameter estimates in this slide gives interesting insights into the purchasing pattern of the home vending company's customers. All significant variables based on the past purchasing behavior in the last eight weeks, this is frequency bought, the sales ratio, and the average monetary value have a positive relationship with the future purchasing behavior. On the other hand, the transactional variables based on the last visit, namely last time visit and last time bought, all have a negative relationship with the probability to purchase on the next visit. Normally, a customer is visited in a bi-weekly schedule. This means that if there are no capacity problems, there are 14 days between visiting the same customer again. These parameter estimates imply that the most attractive customer 
have high RFM scores in general. But if the customer was visited at a normal frequency the last time and moreover bought a product, his or her probability of buying the next time will drop. Although if a customer was not visited due to capacity problems for example, the dummy variable of last time visit and last time bought will be flagged zero. As a result, his or her probability to purchase next time will rise and the likelihood that he or she will be excluded again will decrease. This is illustrated the usefulness of a dynamic model that ranks customers on a daily basis. In order to ensure that at every moment priority is given to clients with the highest purchase probability. With an AUC of about 0.68 on the training, validation and out-of-period test sample, our study confirms that variables related to past purchasing behavior are still good predictors of future purchasing behavior. Notwithstanding this relative good performance, we also see room for improvement through data augmentation with situational variables. In particular, if we include physical surroundings in the form of weather variables, we improve the accuracy of our purchasing prediction model. However, only the sunshine variables offer benefits over and above transactional variables for predicting purchasing. We do not mean to ignore temperature because the univariate relationship to sales indicate it also is significant, but temperature cannot deliver extra predictive value beyond the other variables. Looking at the AUC indicators, we notice significant improvement in terms of predictive performance by taking sunshine variables into account. Sunshine might increase purchase from a physical surroundings perspective, but when we consider the time of the day, we find that visiting customers after 5 p.m. increase the probability to purchase. For visits in the morning or afternoon, we find no significant differences. Remember, our model only includes observations when a customer was at home, so we cannot explain this effect by assuming most people are at work before 5 p.m. Instead, maybe the outcome suggests time pressure. Time pressure has a negative effect on purchasing behavior, but people may experience less time pressure at the end of the day. So, they are more likely to purchase during evening visits. The AUC indicators show that adding this single evening dummy to the basic model results in a small but still significant increase in predictive performance. Now we have one more situational variable to consider. To take social surroundings into account, we used a multi-level model that estimates separate intercept for each salesperson. First, we calculated the intra-class correlation coefficient. This measures the proportion of variance in the outcome explained by the grouping structure and is calculated based on the variance of the random residual error of the intercepts in the model without any independent variable, also called an intercept-only model. Based on these calculations, we can say that 4.96% of the variation in purchasing behavior can be explained if we simply group customers according to who visit them. Also, the AUC indicates that including salesperson-specific intercepts leads to a strong increase in predictive performance. The following slide summarizes the extra predictive performance that results when we augment traditional data with situational dimensions. The smallest improvement, though it is still significant, comes when we include the positive relation between evening visits and purchase. The AUC increases even more when we enhance the database with the three sunshine variables, but the biggest improvement comes from taking the salesperson into account in the multi-level model. When we incorporate all these variables in one final model, the comparison 
where the basic model indicates a consistently strong improvement in the predictive accuracy. In addition, all the relationships remain significant, which implies that the three groups of situational variables each explain a different proportion of the variation in purchasing behavior. Dirk will now end this presentation with some conclusions. To conclude, we can say that companies and researchers certainly should not restrict the predictors in CRM models to variables related to an individual because taking uh, situational information into account significantly improves purchasing behavior predictions. The small but significant improvement in accuracy obtained from including the temporal dimension suggests to shift the working hours of the salespeople of the home vending company toward evening hours to improve their sales ratios. If we look at physical surroundings, only the sunshine variables were able to add extra predictive value to the model. By combining these findings with weather forecast predictions, the home vending company should be able to better foresee and manage capacity problems. This model, in combination with flexible salespeople, can be used by a marketing decision maker to shift more resources to periods with higher purchase probabilities. Even if demand is still too high to visit every customer, the model can be used to give priority to customers with the highest purchase probability. Finally, the largest increase in predictive performance was obtained by taking social surroundings represented by the salesperson effect into account using a multi-level model. The following figure represents the intercepts for each of the 175 salespeople estimated by the final multi-level model. The values are ranked from lowest on the left side to highest on the right side. This figure illustrates that attitudinal and behavioral differences between salespeople result in a significant variation in the ability to sell products. Hence, the home vending company could take these intercept estimations into account during the evaluation process of its salespeople. In a final model, all variables are included, resulting in a significant but also economically relevant improvement of predictive performance. Although our study fills a research gap because we use situational variables to augment data in a CRM context, we also recognize some possible further research extensions. In particular, to generalize our findings from the specific setting of a home vending company, similar analyses should take the perspective of a different sector. We also do not mean to suggest that the situational variables we used are the only ones available. Researchers should investigate whether other undiscovered situational variables might be effective forms of data augmentation. This brings us to the end of our presentation. If you are interested in further details, the written text appears in the ninth volume of the International Journal of Information Technology and Decision Making, issue number six, published in 2010. In addition, more information about other studies undertaken by our department can be found at our website www.crm.ugen.be. Thank you for allowing us to share our findings with you.